AQA A Level Physics. This is my third electricity video and it's about resistivity. So I'm covering this part of the specification. Uh, you'll see there's resistivity there and there's quite a bit about thermistors. Uh, and then we know, need to know a little bit about uh, superconductors as well. So let's gnash on. Now imagine this metal rod, which obviously could be a piece of wire. Now, what does its resistance end to end depend on? You should basically be able to figure out its resistance depends on its length. I mean, if you double the length, then it'll be twice as much because it's just like putting two resistors in series with each other. So the resistance is proportional to the length. R is proportional to L. The resistance will be inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So A on the diagram, that's pi R squared, the cross-sectional area, uh, because doubling the cross-sectional area would be like putting two resistors in parallel. So the resistance would be half as much. It's a bit like a, a pipe. Imagine a pipe with water flowing in it. Uh, and if you double the cross-sectional area of the pipe, then the current will be twice as much. So the resistance is half. And then it depends on the material and the property of the material. The material property is called its resistivity. So uh, we use the symbol rho the Greek letter rho, which is the same one that we use for density, uh, and the resistance is proportional to the resistivity of the material. Yeah, the resistance of the wire, the rod, is proportional to the resistivity of the material. R equals rho L over A. Okay. Uh, if you want to work out the resistivity, rearranging that, rho equals Ra over L, you should be able to manipulate these equations. Okay. Uh, at constant temperature, uh, resistivity is constant, although for a metal it would increase with temperature. Um, some metals have a, a very small resistivity, for example, copper, because copper's a, we say copper is a good conductor because it has a small resistivity. Look at that, 1.77 times 10 to the minus eight ohm meters. Yeah, don't forget the units. And then materials which are good insulators have a large resistivity. So there's lots of different types of plastic, but you're talking about 10 to the 14 ohm meters. Okay, so large resistivity insulators, small resistivity, conductors. Here's a sum for you to have a go at. Um, calculate the cross-sectional area of the wire. Uh, calculate the resistance of the wire. Uh, pause the video. Have a go at this. I'll show you the answer in two seconds. And the answer is... There you go. So be careful working out cross-sectional areas. Be careful. Always get rid of millimeters as soon as possible. OK, so there's your cross-sectional area and there's your resistance. Uh, why does the resistivity of metals increase with temperature? Well, in a metal, we know that the charge carriers, the things that carry the charge, are free electrons. Now, the atoms in the metal are vibrating. They're not just sat there doing nothing. Uh, and the higher the temperature, the more they vibrate, the more vigorously they vibrate. And because it, of that, it's harder for the electrons to get through the gaps. If you do have to explain it, use the word collisions. There are more collisions. OK, so the electrons are trying to bounce their way through the gaps between the atoms. Uh, if it's like a mosh pit and the atoms are going crazy, it's a lot harder for the electrons to go through. So at higher temperatures, there are many more collisions. So it's harder for the electrons, the free electrons to get through. Now, thermistors. And you certainly need to know the circuit symbol for a thermistor. Now, 
uh, the material that they're made from is not like a metal. When it gets hot, the resistance gets smaller. Look at this graph, temperature against resistance. And as it heats up, the resistance of the thermistor gets smaller. Now, why? Uh, well, they're not made of metal. They're, they're made of a material called a semiconductor. Uh, and all you need to know is that at higher temperatures, more charge carriers become available. The number of mobile, in other words, ones that can move, the number of mobile charge carriers uh, increases. Yeah, we say the charge carrier density increases. There are more charge carriers, so you can get a bigger current. In terms of semiconductors, that's about all you need to know. Now, thermistors, you, you generally don't use a thermistor on its own. You would use it in a potential divider. Okay, the, I've done a whole video on potential dividers coming up, but you'd have your thermistor in series with another fixed resistor uh, and the two of them together as a potential divider. Okay, uh, have a go at this question. I'll show you the answer in a couple of seconds. So what's the resistance of this thermistor at 20 degrees centigrade? Well, according to this graph, it's about 3000 ohms. Uh, what fixed resistor would you recommend? Uh, you would use about 3000 ohms as well. That way the voltage is shared between them evenly. And if the temperature changes, you'll get the biggest change in voltage across the resistor so it will be more sensitive yeah the change in voltage per change in temperature will be greatest superconductors now this is a very special type of material and uh, we've said if uh, if a material gets like a metal gets colder then its resistance gets less now, there's a particular type of material that when you get to a certain temperature called the critical temperature, the resistance actually becomes zero. All kinds of weird quantum things happen inside the, the metal, which we don't need to know about. But basically, the charge carriers can pass through it uh, unimpeded. There's no resistance. Now, depending on the material, we're talking about 30 Kelvin, 90 Kelvin, okay, about minus 200 degrees centigrade, around there. For certain materials, they superconduct. Superconductors, um, if you need very, very strong electromagnets, for example, in, a, in this particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, that uses very, very strong electromagnets, uh, which are supercooled with liquid helium. Uh, and if they weren't, they'd basically melt. Um, this MRI machine uh, has very, very strong electromagnets uh, and they are cooled down so that they superconduct. Uh, otherwise, they would be very, very hot and it would become a barbecue, really. I wouldn't want to go in there. Okay. And one big, big advantage of it is that if the magnet is superconducting, then the current in it flows all by itself, so you don't need a power supply. You need a power supply to get it working, but once the current is flowing all by itself, you can just turn off the power supply and it will keep working, this very, very strong magnet. A holy grail of physics would be to develop what we call a room temperature superconductor, uh, a metal, a cheap metal or other material that superconducts at room temperature. And we would make all of our electricity transmission cables out of it and we wouldn't lose any energy at all. Okay, so electricity transmission can be very inefficient if we could make these cables out of a superconductor, would save an awful lot of money.